The Peninsula by Louise Dickinson Rich. Introduction. Most of us, I suppose, at one time or another, experience a longing for another way of life. Suddenly our days and our energies seem to be expended on trivia. We're overcome by a sense of being alien, of not belonging in the world in which we find ourselves, of being out of step with the times and out of sympathy with the attitudes that we encounter. We are hungry for the fundamentals, for the satisfaction of wresting food from the stubborn earth, of raising our own roof trees with our own hands, of combating successively man's implacable hereditary foes, the wind and the weather. We suffer a great nostalgia, which means a sickness to return home. Where is this home? We don't know. We try to find it by spending summers at the beach, by moving to old farmhouses within the commuting zone, by taking do-it-yourself courses, by hunting moose at enormous expense in Nova Scotia, by cultivating herbaceous borders or making our own bread. We try hard to go home, but we can't find the way. In their artificiality, the means we employ are doomed to failure. None of the things we do is of necessity. There is always a safe retreat from our self-imposed hardships. We can't go home because the home we are seeking never actually existed for any of us. It lies, rather, deep in racial memory of our beginnings on this continent. What we really wish is that time would turn back so that we might live the simple, self-sufficient lives of our ancestors. That's impossible, of course. Even if it were possible, we'd almost certainly be disappointed and dismayed by the result. But very few ever have an opportunity to put the matter to the test. By chance, I've had that opportunity and I'd like to tell you about it. I'd like to tell you what it is like to live in a village that is in its essentials, the same now as it was a hundred years ago. There is unavoidably a thin, a very thin veneer of modernism, but underneath it lies the unchanged structure of our lost, remembered home.